All right, welcome in everyone. Lufo ELT coming to you with the third business English video in my business English series. And the topic for today's video is motivation, conflict resolution, and some management tools. Um, so if you haven't seen the first two videos in this business English series, I will leave a link in the description and I suggest that you start from video one because these videos are cumulative. So that means you need to watch the first video to understand the second video and you need to watch the first and the second video to understand this third video. So if you haven't seen those, take a look in the description, start with video one and uh, come back to this one after you watch uh, videos one and two. All right, um, in videos one and two, you will see business English vocabulary and see how they're used in context. So um, that's where you'll see the language learning part of this series. Um, by the time I'm getting to this video, we're more focused on the uh, business uh, concepts and the management practices. So if, you're, if you uh, want to understand how language learning happens in this video, like I said, go ahead and check out videos one and two. So um, let's just review some of the concepts that we've looked at so far. Um, so far, we've looked at the four different types of uncertainty. We've looked at the triangle of relationships between manager, team, and individual, so we can understand how those relationships uh, are structured. And then we've looked at the trust matrix, so we can understand how to build uh, trusting, uh, functioning, healthy, working relationships um, from the beginning and maintain them as well. Then we've looked at the three constraint factors of uh, budget and uh, schedule and quality and then we've uh, looked at the triple constraint star to understand how to make paradoxical decisions um, with those three constraint factors in mind and today we're going to look at motivating your employees um, we're going to look at uh, conflict resolution using the four-step conflict resolution model and then we'll look at tools, um, some tools for effective decision making and uh, overall management, those being the Gantt chart. And then we'll um, start to look at the concept of earn value management. Okay, so for the vocabulary that we're going to be learning today, obviously I talked about resolving conflicts. So we're going to look at a model that will help you uh, step-by-step uh, step resolve conflicts and also motivate people uh, that you're responsible for and get them to do important tasks autonomous, autonomous, autonomously, excuse me, and proactively. Okay, so um, let's just get into that. Um, so uh, we're going to be talking specifically about motivating millennial workers um, and then um, we'll be also be uh, looking at those other things that I mentioned. Um, so the goal here is to introduce ideas to help motivate your staff, resolve conflicts and teach the basics of earned value management approach. Okay, so uh, I'm doing something a little bit different in this video compared to uh, the first and second video. Um, I have a link to a uh, article which is um, kind of like a, a business journal. It's a it's from the veterinary uh, field, but this article is very good. Even though it's not from a super well known, very reputable source, I've compared it with. Um, some uh, more well-known and established, uh, you know, business journals like, you know, for example, Forbes and these kinds of um, media outlets. And this article compares very well. It's, it's very comprehensive. The only thing you need to do is just replace, uh, when they talk about hospitals or veterinary business, just replace um, the veterinary field with whatever field you're in. And I think these ideas are applicable. I've discussed this article at length with um, some of my language learners and um, people who are learning business English and they really like this article. Um, and although this article is about millennial employees specifically, the concepts are still good for motivating employees from other generations as well, both um, 
you know, older, and I, I guess I'm not sure if there's a younger generation working right now than millennials, but the point is, I think it works for everyone um, because uh, the environment that uh, millennials grew up in is the point of view how we understand to motivate millennials, but everyone is working in that environment now. It's just more true maybe for millennials because they grew up in that environment and those circumstances. So the point is, even though it's for millennials and for the veterinarian field, you can apply this concept to um, any field and to any uh, age group as well. So I encourage you to go uh, use the link in the description and check out this article. I'm not affiliated with the today's veterinary business dot com at all i just think this is a great um article so you can read that but i will go through uh the points one by one there are 12 points 12 ways to motivate millennials um first one is offering a meaningful vision okay offer a meaningful vision so this is something like a um uh, a stated goal for the year or maybe um, the company's mission statement or things like this Sometimes those things are pretty meaningless to the employees, but making it meaningful somehow for the employees is an important way to motivate millennials. They have to believe in what the company stands for. And it's even better if they can be involved in creating the uh, meaningful vision. All right. Uh, two, provide guidance and mentorship. So in videos one and two, we've talked about several ways of building relationships. And uh, I think that um, providing helpful feedback is, is good for millennial motivating millennial workers. Ensure a work-life balance. So there are, um, the article talks about that there are studies that show that millennials value free time a little bit more than money. Um, so ensuring that, uh, you know, millennials have enough free time uh, to spend with their friends and families and things like this, um, balanced with their work and not just constantly, um, you know, wishing that they would work overtime or work harder, things like this is very important for um, millennials. Um, offering timely or frequent feedback. Um, so this one is you know, basically the timing of your feedback. So things like um, mentoring or coaching or things like this um, in a predictable way. And also, um, you know, maybe if something unpredictable happens and you want to give some feedback, doing it when it's relevant, timely. Um, this is important. Uh, number five, build strong relationships. So this one is the one point um, in the article that I don't know I really agree with it. I think that they wrote this one in order to talk to managers and not employees. And they say to do things like um, have like, you know, company dinner or, you know, some kind of event or something like this. I don't know that um, millennial workers necessarily like that thing. Maybe they would. Every company is different. So, um, but you might also uh, encourage the workers to make their own groups, little social groups, you know, where maybe they go, uh, they have like a table tennis club or hiking group or something like this, you know, soccer team, whatever it is. Um, and they build relationships with each other and then they invite people into those groups. Um, this can be healthy and make the um, uh, workplace uh, more um, important in their lives. And this helps to motivate them because uh, if they don't have that job, then they don't have those other relationships or um, parts of their life going on. Um, so basically making it a little bit more than just about work. Okay. Uh, number six, offer the right compensation and benefits. So, you know, you might not have much control over this as the manager, but um, even just trying to understand how your employees feel about this um, is uh, important in motivating them. Um, offer flexibility. So, um, for example, you know, if um, someone has... Uh, a, a kid who is entering kindergarten or something, maybe you allow them to come in one hour late and stay and work an extra hour after everyone else so that that person can take their kid to school in the morning and then maybe their spouse picks up 
their son or daughter from school in the evening or, or whatever it is. So things like this, you know, being flexible, making the uh, work environment um, flexible and um, uh, accommodating for your employees will make them appreciate you and work harder for you. Uh, playing games. Okay, this one is also maybe slightly controversial. I'll let you read it and you can make up your own mind about it. Um, I think it depends on many things. Your national culture, your company culture, and even what type of industry you're in. Um, okay, the ninth one is offering freedom. Um, I think this is a little similar with number seven. Um, number 10, uh, adapt your communication. So this is about uh, the, the way that you communicate with your employees. Um, that's really important. Um, some things you might be fine sending an email, but other things you might need to communicate more face-to-face -face with them about. Um, being trusting. Um, I've seen work environments where the managers or you know the business teams don't trust the other teams or you know, the managers don't trust their employees and it's just obvious in the way that they treat them. Um, and this creates an adversarial relationship and it's definitely um, the opposite of motivating your workers. It's demotivating. So try to trust your employees. Even if you're not happy or necessarily satisfied with them all the time, try to teach them and try to trust them to do the right thing. Um, all right, and the last one is offering enjoyment. Um, so this is a really great article, and I think it offers a lot of good uh, insight into how to motivate your workers and especially your millennial workers. Okay, um, if you have any questions or comments about this article, you agree or disagree with anything I've said, feel free to leave it in the comments section. We can discuss. Um, now we'll move on to looking at the four-step conflict resolution model. Um, basically, this is very simple. Uh, this looks at a problem. It may be a problem between people or situations or ideas or other things. It looks at the problem in reality and then thinks about it in theory. And first we look at what is wrong and then we look at what we need to do to fix this. Okay, so first we'll look at step one. Uh, step one is just looking at the problem itself. We have to ask ourselves, what's wrong? What are the current symptoms? So what, what uh, other problems or issues is this problem creating? And what elements of the situation do people dislike or what would they prefer to happen alternatively? Okay, and once uh, everyone agrees, that's a very important um, point here, everyone has to agree for each step to move forward to the next step. So once everyone is in agreement about the answers to those questions in step one, we can move to step two. In this phase, we're looking at the problem in theory now, still addressing what's wrong, and we're analyzing it, okay? So step two is analysis. Uh, diagnose the problem, sort out the symptoms into different categories, suggest the causes, um, and observe what is lacking. Note barriers to resolving this problem, okay? So once again, after everyone is in agreement about each one of these points, you can move to step three. And now we're looking at possible solutions, approaches to solving the problem. So what are possible strategies or prescriptions to solving the problem? What are some theoretical cures? Uh, generate broad ideas about what might be done here. So here we're brainstorming possible solutions to the problem. And once everyone is in agreement about uh, this step, we can move into step four, which is actually moving into action uh, to solve the problem, action ideas. So what might be done, what specific steps might be taken to deal with the problem. So here we're just looking at maybe what we've thought about or talked about in step three and deciding which ones we want to choose to try to solve the problem in reality.
All right, so that is the four-step conflict resolution model. This is a very effective approach. And if you're going to use this, I think you can even show this to the people involved who are trying to resolve the conflict so that they understand how you're approaching solving this problem. Or maybe you can just explain it to them very briefly or easily draw it up on a whiteboard, things like this. If they understand the process for solving the problem, they're a lot more likely to participate and, and less likely to get frustrated and things like this, okay? All right, now we're moving into um, earned value management. Earned value management is approach to management where you monitor the project plan, the work, and look at the completed values to see if a project is on track or a project or a task or things like this. Earned value shows you how much of the budget and schedule uh, should have been spent by a particular point considering the amount of work at a, a certain place in the project. Um, and so this takes into account the um, constraint factors that we looked at before. So if you understood those, you can use this uh, approach to management to help you with a project or a task or something that's ongoing. And Gantt charts can give you the data you need to use this management approach. Okay, so you have, you understand the concepts and then you get the actual specific data through using Gantt charts. Okay, what are Gantt charts? Gantt charts demonstrate simultaneous tasks, which are tasks that are happening at the same time, and dependencies, which are tasks that can't be started until um, another task has been completed. Um, they also denote the critical path for the project, which is the sequence of dependent tasks that define the route to completion. So some things that you plan in a project may not be absolutely necessary for the project to be completed, but um, there are certain critical fundamental tasks which must happen and Gantt charts show that. Um, a group bar demonstrates um, interdependencies between one task to another to illustrate how uh, complete one major step in the project is. Um, and you can use this to explain, demonstrate to stakeholders why certain tasks become a source of bottlenecks or delays in the project or things like this, because inevitably things happen. We talked about uncertainty before, right? Some things cannot be predicted. So this is an effective way to show uh, other managers or stakeholders in, uh, this, in a project or something that's ongoing, why maybe you're behind schedule or you know things like this. Um, and it puts it in a very objective and easy to understand way. And that's because Gantt charts provide a very clear visual representation of completed work and remaining work. Gantt charts show degree of completeness and um, it's also a common tool for communicating and controlling the progress in a project. And Gantt charts provide a uh, very clear representation of the work that's been completed and still has to be done, as I've mentioned before. And um, they also demonstrate how the, how the work that has or has not been done may influence the rest of the project. Okay, so it doesn't just show what's been done and what hasn't been done, but it also shows um, how what has been finished or what hasn't been finished is going to uh, uh, dictate the rest of the way um, for the project until completion. And the tasks that are listed in a Gantt chart are generally equivalent to those that are listed in a work breakdown system. Um, and so uh, sometimes the steps in a work breakdown system, the work breakdown system is basically each individual task that must be done in a certain process. And those might be listed on a Gantt chart as well. Um, and these are the task list. Um, and th this shows how complete one major step um, is in the project. And again, you can create subtasks to show more precisely how the project will be completed. Gantt charts also use shading to demonstrate the level of completeness of a given task. And you can see that uh, as each task is completed, the group bar, which shows the major step, 
um, in each task gets filled in a little bit more. So in, in addition to providing timelines and telling stakeholders how complete work is, um, the charts show a degree of completeness more accurately. Um, so this helps you to be more effective in managing a project. I understand that this a lot of the language here um, and the ideas are a little uh, difficult uh, to understand, but it's definitely worth it to spend the time to try to understand this and um, use this if you've never heard of this or seen this before. So once again, as I said, there is uncertainty and things almost never go exactly according to plan. So make sure you have backup plans in place. Um, and now we're going to take a look at how Gantt charts offer a lot of useful data. Um, this will be what we look at in the next video, actually. Uh, I will teach about some earned value management metrics um, that you can use for calculating, measuring, and testing uh, ideas. And once again, um, how much of the work has been completed and what still needs to be done. And you can use these tools um, at any point during your project and use them to decide whether or not your plan is going okay or whether you need to take some kind of corrective action. Um, because as I said, things don't always go according to plan. And sometimes that's okay. It's just a variation. But sometimes you need to change your plan uh, so that uh, you can complete the project um, with a different schedule or a different budget or something like this to make it acceptable. Um, if plans go too far away from the reality of what's happening, that's a problem. So these tools will help you to measure that. Okay, so let's just summarize what we've talked about here. Facilitate an environment that makes your employees feel more motivated. I gave the article for that and some of the concepts that we've talked about in the past also look at that. Resolve conflicts through a four-step process that involves identifying the problem, analyzing the problem, brainstorming solutions, and putting in place and executing an action plan. Uh, and finally, teach your employees how to use tools like Gantt charts to manage projects and follow a management approach like the earned value management approach. All right, so let's just do a quick comprehension quiz to make sure you understood everything. All right, here, um, question one, which of the following is not one of the motivational factors mentioned earlier in the video? So we're talking about motivating employees. Which one of these is not one of the things that is mentioned? One, offering a meaningful vision. Two, playing games. Three, punish under underperforming employees and reward employees who perform well. Or four, ensure work-life balance. Which one was not mentioned from the list of 12 that I gave earlier? And I will show the answer now. That's right, it's number three. Punish underperforming employees and reward employees who perform well. Uh, that is not one of the uh, motivational factors mentioned before. All right, question number two. Offering a meaningful vision is listed as one of the most important things in motivating millennial employees. Which of the following is the least likely to offer a meaningful vision? One. Create an internal mission statement to make the main objectives clear. Two, set unachievable targets in hopes that employees will achieve at least 75% of the stated goals. Three, have employees set personal and professional goals for how they will develop themselves as an employee and contribute to the company. Okay, which one of these is least likely to help offer a meaningful vision. And I will show the answer now. That's right, it's number two. If you set unachievable targets, this is not meaningful and it's likely to have a demotivating effect because employees will not believe in the goal that's been stated. All right, this is very common uh, in many, many companies. Um, the idea is we set the goal super, super high, and if the employees can achieve at least half or 75% of this, then we're good. And maybe it works, but it's not motivating. It makes uh, employees um, detached um, and 
not happy about their workplace because they can never win, basically. All right, and looking at uh, question three, this is about comprehending conflict resolution. Uh, here we have question three. What step in the four-step conflict resolution model should you note uh, potential barriers to solving the problems in? Step one, a problem. Step two, analysis. Step three, approaches. Or step four, action ideas. So in which step do we note potential barriers to solving a problem? I'll show the answer now. That's right, step two, analysis. All right, um, and moving on now to question four, comprehending Gantt charts. Why do Gantt charts use shading? All right, why do they use shading? Is it one, to show how complete a given task is, two, to show dependencies, three, to show the critical path, or four, to show subtasks? All right, why do Gantt charts use shading? All right, and I'll show the answer now. All right, it's one, to show how complete a given task is. All right, good. And now let's just wrap up this video. Um, hopefully uh, you found the things in this video very helpful. And uh, in the next video, we're going to look at some earned value management metrics, which I uh, discussed a little bit earlier after we looked at Gantt charts. I showed a preview of what we'll be looking at next time. Um, and uh, I hope that these uh, earned value management metrics are going to be very helpful um, in your uh, work. All right. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was very helpful. If you want to discuss anything in this video, you can leave a comment. If you have a, um, a question or you would like to see me make another type of English education video, you can leave that in the comments. I don't just do business uh, English. I do all types of English language learning videos. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.